If you thought the cars games we've looked at so far are obscure, you're in for a treat. Uh, my quest continues to review every single cars game ever, and this time we're taking a look at the two GBA games, the original movie tie-in, and made a national championship. I emulated them, so keep that in mind, but they seem to run perfectly fine. Let's get to it. Hey! Wow. I'm not sure if I've ever enjoyed an isometric racing game in my life. Like, if I had to pick a specific genre that produced the most underwhelming but not complete trash games, then I think isometric races would probably be my pick. Introducing Cars on the GBA, one of the most underwhelming isometric racing games there are. Uh, it controls how you'd expect, with A and B being accelerate and brake and left and right a steer, and it's quite a pretty game with large sprites and smooth scrolling graphics, but it's so zoomed in that it's legitimately impossible to react to anything coming up. I initially thought that this was going to be the hardest game ever because I couldn't really do anything about upcoming corners and the arrows appearing on the screen were just useless, but then I learned I could toggle this map on in the middle of the screen with the trigger, and I spent the rest of my time with this game just staring at at that instead of the road, which made it much easier. Still though, the steering is overly sensitive, and the fast pace just makes it so cornering involves crossing your fingers and trying not to oversteer. And it puts the occasional obstacle on the road, like traffic or rocks, which most of the time you simply can't avoid without memorization, which can also be said about the occasional boost and slowing pads on the road. I didn't have a hard time once I got used to the feel of it, but it's the kind of game that I think would have been super hard as a kid because you really need to focus and it just steers really weird. Interestingly, they've tried to recreate a bit of the mission structure from the main game. I mean, there's no open world, but you can pick and choose and slowly unlock more events as the game goes on. It even has the Piston Cup races from the main game, and like the main game, they're very slightly mechanically different, except this time you build up a boost meter by slipstreaming cars, and then you press the right trigger to boost. They've also attempted a little bit of story with these short written dialogue screens before some events, and it vaguely follows the same story as the main game, where most of the dialogue is actually word for word taken straight from it. Weirdly though, there's only 16 events in the whole game. You can only play as Lightning with a few different colour schemes, there's no multiplayer or extra modes, in fact the only extra content is some unlockable steals from the movie, and the game is over in about an hour or so. It doesn't help that all the desert tracks look the same, all the piston cup tracks look the same, and there's no other track type in the game at all. I guess it's presented nicely and it doesn't have any bugs or anything, but it's so simple and boring and zoomed in, there's just nothing of value here aside from some okay visuals. It's a shame because this feels like a bad cash-in movie game, but the main version of this game bucks the trend of bad cash-in movie games. Wow, you're so dominant. It seems they listened to the complaint that the first game was a bad isometric racer, so they followed it up with a full-blown 3D racer. What's amazing about this game is that it fits all of the mini-me cliches, like it's a GBA game, it's a movie game, it's graphically impressive, and it's a Cars game. I feel like this game was tailor-made for me. I always saw this in passing and wondered how and why it looked so good, especially because it's literally one of the last GBA games to ever come out, releasing in late 2007. When I finally booted it up for the first time, I saw the Tantalus logo and it all started to make sense. These days, these Melbournians are mostly well known for some high profile ports like Sonic Mania on Switch and Twilight Princess on Wii U, but I know them as the guys who made my first ever GBA game, Top Gear Rally. This thing wasn't a masterpiece, but it was an unexpectedly solid GBA rally game, and more importantly, it heralded this brilliant in-house 3D engine which smoothly scrolled through the levels and had giant polygonal car models. And Made a National almost feels like a reskin of Top Gear Rally, complete with rally style turning indicators appearing on the screen. Other levels feel super similar to Top Gear Rally, and there's a decent amount of tracks and cars, and the cars in particular are super detailed by GBA standards. They're very high poly, and they even have working brake lights, except for McQueen because his are stickers, which is a nice touch. You can even play as the foreign cars from the main game, and Lizzie, which seems a bit unrealistic that she can even keep up in races considering she's a 1920s Ford Model T, but you know what else is unrealistic? cars that can talk. The game controls like Top Gear Rally did too, but I understand that that's like the least relatable statement ever, so it basically controls slightly better than you might expect for a game like this. It's actually weighty, and the sliding and drifting physically makes sense, so it feels pretty good. Also impressive is both that the cars all feel different, and you can switch on the fly between three camera angles. Unfortunately though, the game is just far too simple. Aside from the very occasional boost on the ground, there's nothing more to it than just driving, and that'd be fine if the game weren't so 
easy. Every single race was just getting ahead of the pack at the start and then never seeing anyone ever again and there's no other modes besides racing, not even multiplayer. Uh, after a quick 40 minutes of 1-2 to two minute races you finish the game and unlock expert mode which is still too easy but at least if you screw up hard you might not win this time. If you do for some reason want to play this yourself, use this password on the screen right now to unlock expert mode and just start from there. That's right, this game uses a password save system. 2007 GBA games ain't gonna get those nice cartridges. Made in National loosely tells the same story as the main version of the game and there's a handful of events where you need to beat the foreigners in races and they have these little setup scenes which just like in the first game also carry over some dialogue from the main game. Though they made the Japanese racer speak English which completely undermines that gag. Sure. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Mater, you speak Japanese? Well sure, doesn't everybody? And that kind of sums up Made in National and the first game on GBA. Like, neither of them are really worth playing, but you know, they were fun to look at in a shorter video like this. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank all my patrons, including all the people on the screen right now. And uh, especially including Analog Man, By Mini Me Branded Pregnancy Tests, Caden the Dingo, Dad, Devin Grandal, Dominic Chakoki, Dump Truck Parked in My Driveway, Evil Chicken, Homer 821, Labcat, Lucas Raysevic, Magnus Icomo Stavik, Matthias Bayes, Maximilian Kunzman, May Aris Mazaki, Mrs. Mini Me, Peaceful Kumquat, Renegade, Review Disney Planes, Steel Christenberry, Trixie Emerson, Riding on Games, and Zindictive. Uh, I appreciate it. Links to my Patreon and everything are in the description. Um, if I missed any of your names, um, that's actually because I made this video a while before it released if you're watching it live. Um, I'm actually in New Zealand right now, technically. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.